Okay, I guess on my hair, she look all right. And with that actually sitting there like this creams, and I had to have them, sis. All fab here. I just had, we're gonna discontinue it, but I had to pick up their book of shadows, honey. The color green makes she fan, expensive breeze, good time. Wise hole, serious? <laughs> What's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Torrance here and in today's video I am truly excited to get things started. If you all do not know, I try to do a purple look every month. I'm not sure if I did one last month, but I wasn't going to miss out on this month. I usually try to do these for my friend Lorraine Johnson Coleman. If you want to know the backstory behind that, you can check out my first video right here explaining that when we first started doing these purple looks. But this is the one I wanted to bring to you all this month and it's playing with one of my absolute favorite brands, Juvia's Place, and their newest palette, the Garden of Juvia's palette, honey. First off, get into this packaging like, sis, she did not come to play. She is looking absolutely stunning. The flowers, the butterflies, honey, it's like, uh, I know it better be colorful on the inside. You know Juvia's. The packaging is usually the color story too, so when we get inside, I was like, ooh, Look at the colors on her. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I, I'm, I'm a fan of colorful palettes. But pastels? Pastels? Honey, I have hooded lids. I'm a person of color. I like deep, dark, rich jewel tones. A palette that don't have crease and outer V-shades is like, um, why would I spend my money on that? But Juvia's Place, chances are they gonna always get a coin out of me because I love them. And y'all love them too. So I wanted to give y'all my real, true, honest first impressions on this palette. First look I ever achieved, I'm like, purple full of rain, pastel to step out of my comfort zone, which she good for making us do, honey. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is a palette up for the challenge. And because I'm a huge collector of Juvia's Place, I had to get my review up of this palette, honey. So if you want to know my honest thoughts of this palette, you're going to have to wait till the very end. But if you want to see swatches of this palette or how I achieved this look, just go ahead and keep on watching. And it's no surprise that Juvia's Place kills it with the packaging. Each and every palette I've ever seen from Juvia's Place has beautiful packaging. The box does match the palette itself, so you don't have to worry about getting beautiful artwork on the box, throwing it out, and having something plain right here in person. I'm trying to catch it without the ring light, but as you can tell, this is a very reflective pattern. So it is going to show up, but it's the inside that we want to get to. And the color story on this here is absolutely beautiful. On the inside, we have 16 beautiful shades. This is considered an eyeshadow and pigment palette. So there are eight eyeshadows and eight pigments. So if you are someone who has allergies or sensitivity to pigments, I would check out the ingredients list before purchasing this palette. Baby, look at the color shift on these dual chrome shimmers. For swatches, I would normally go horizontally but today I decided to go vertically to keep things true to the color story. And you can see right there, the shift is absolutely beautiful. Not gonna lie, at first, just looking at them in the pan, the colors appear a lot deeper and richer, but once swatched out, it does appear that this is a true pastel palette. And you can just see the way the light catches these shimmers. I'm excited to see what the next two columns are gonna look like. Now y'all know, greens are my absolute favorites, but I'm going to keep it honest with y'all. The pinks and purples in this palette is stunning on those yellows and greens. One, just they look so much more prettier to me. The thing is, most of these purples are considered pigments and not eyeshadows, so that could be it. But baby, I give props where props are due. The mattes on the purple side are much more vibrant. The shimmers are a little deeper, but it does appear that the uh, dual chrome flip is stronger with those green shades. So we're going to go ahead, prep our eyes, and let's get into this look. All right, you guys, let's go ahead and get into this tutorial. Before we get started, I want to remind you all tools and product shoes will be in the description bar below. I'll also leave my foundation shade references just in case you ever want to know what my skin tone is. But I got to be honest with y'all. Although I am excited to play with this palette because you all know, Juvia's Place has my heart. 
You all seem to always love those videos. Juvia's Place seems to bring me some of the most uh, views. And it was also the very first tutorial I did was Juvia's Place uh, tutorial. So I'm not even mad at it. The thing is, pastels. Yeah, honey, um, I don't know if you know me well enough, but if you don't, welcome to the channel. My name is Taurus. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you already haven't. But I'm a lover of deep, deep, rich jewel tones. So although I'm seeing all this color, I'm like, look at all those transition shades. Where's my crease and outer V shades? They not here, honey. So we gonna keep this nice and simple for y'all. And ain't no point in lying. Although greens are normally my favorites, we haven't done our purple look for Lorraine this month. So we gotta go ahead and get into it. So I'm like, um, Torrance, light like you, this purple matte at the top, honey. We're gonna go ahead and use her as a transition shade. So let me grab my large rougher number 27 brush, grab us a little mirror and let's get things started because honey, we're gonna keep this look simple today. Like simple, simple. Ooh. She's pigmented, but then again, I believe this shade is considered a pigment. Let me look right here, light like you. Yes, ma'am, this is a pressed pigment. I don't mind them, so hopefully she bring me the color, but just in case, we're going to dust her off. We can always go back in for a little bit now. And let's start here. We're going to take this as a transition all the way throughout. Okay, okay. Sis, when they said she is pastel, they were not playing. I don't think I even needed to knock it off because I, they said it was a pigment. So I just wanted to be on the safer side of things. You can see that's purple. Or at least, hopefully, if I told you that was purple, you can see that there. So, you know, we're definitely going in for a second round of that. This time, we're just going to slightly tap off the brush. I ain't even worried about fallout with a color it is bright. Okay, the second layer, is she building? Yes, I know she blended really quickly, but a color that pale ain't going to give us no issues. And I honestly just want to do a third layer just to see what she's looking like and to see if she's gonna give us even more impact, but I keep trying to remind myself, Torrance, this is a pastel look. This ain't your normal, everyday, deep, dark shade, so. Truth be told, as a pastel transition shade, just looking for it, you can definitely see that compared to this side. So, telling myself we going for pastel, I'ma say she's doing beautifully. It's just, my love of jewel tones got me wanting something so much darker, so I'm, I'm not going to fault Juvia's Place for this. I'm just going to go one more layer just to see what it's going to offer me. Yeah, and see, that wasn't even necessary for real. I think she's truly giving me a little more color, but I didn't barely tap my brush off or anything. And to me, anything should give you some pigment with three layers. But if you have a lighter complexion or you want a lighter color, you can only do, well, you can do just two layers. But baby, I'm not gonna lie, I wanted that third one there. Cause I like my colors to stand out on their own. So look at her. Nice and beautiful. She's truly a transition shade. So I'll be right back. Okay, you guys, I'm not gonna lie. She looking a little better after we done did both eyes, but I still need to deepen up my crease cause this ain't enough for me. So what I'm gonna do is go into this darker purple shade here, Sweet Lilac, and we're gonna take that on a slightly smaller blending brush and we're gonna deepen up our entire crease. This shade here is also a pigment, so just letting you all know that. No point in lying, honey. These things will fill up a brush. We're gonna just tap that slightly because I want that pigment. Baby, I ain't gonna lie, I want that pigment. As you know, we're gonna play fair. One more, just in case. We'll come down to the lowest part of our crease and all the way through and see what she gives us. Is she deepening things up? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, she giving me the cliche that I was hoping for. Baby, uh-uh. We're gonna definitely have to layer her up to see if she was worth it, because um, with just this one layer, y'all see a difference in color with one layer? We're gonna go in. And we're gonna just tap it one time for the second layer, and we're gonna Go slow and pack it down first. And then to slowly buffer out the C. Let's 
Sis, is this just me or are those the same colors? When you swatch them, they not. When you look at them in the pan, they not. Okay, this one, we gonna hold Juvia's for this third layer here and we not tapping nothing off. I just wanna see what this look like if I just pack it right there. Yeah, just packing it on without even buffing it out. That don't look like two different colors there. That looks like I took one color and drug her down. Okay, that's all she gonna give. Um, sweet lilac. I don't see nothing sweet, so um, I'll just be right back, y'all. We want to keep this look as simple as possible, so I'm just gonna go ahead. I forgot to get my eye primer out, honey. And we're gonna cut our crease. Actually, I don't even want to necessarily cut the crease. I just want to prime the lid, but I do want to use my next glitter adhesive, honey. I'm gonna just put some of this on the back of our hand. And because I'm not really worried about getting nothing precise or anything like that, we're gonna use a slightly wider brush. This is the e.l.f. concealer brush. We're just gonna pick it on, slap it on, and keep it moving, honey. I'm gonna get a thin layer across the brush. And we're just gonna go. We're gonna just push it all the way in the socket and pull it straight down. Do that all the way and just rock this brush back and forth. I'm not worried about no crease work being deleted or anything at all. I'm just pushing it as far in as I can, bringing it back down. Cover the lid. Do this fast enough to the point where I won't even have to jump cut for that. I'm just gonna put that on there. And we're gonna make sure that things don't look messed up because we can always go back in with our blending brush and diffuse any edges that we get. Now that our lids are primed, we can go ahead and pick us a shade, honey. We got three different shimmers here that are purple. And just because this is supposed to be a pastel look, we're going to try to avoid this darkest one if we can. And we're going to skip down to this one here. This is called Flower Child. And we're going to take this across our entire lids. We're going to use our natural hair brush. This is just a flat shade of brush that was discontinued from Sephora. You can use any one that you have. And I want to just go ahead, pick up some product. Let me see, she looked like she's picking up beautifully, honey. And we're just going to take this. We're going to start the bottom of our lid and just press and push our way up into the crease, honey. Okay, this is not the most metallic shadow. But it does appear anywhere you place it down, there is nice pigmentation. And I'm worried about mostly pressing it first. And then as we get closer to the crease, we'll go out and diffuse things. This is where, now that my brush is close into the crease, I wanna just press, press, press. And then once we figure everything is covered, then I can go back in and slightly just buff it back and forth to diffuse those edges. I do not want a harsh line. Do that on the other side as well. And now to diffuse those edges, we're gonna go back into our second blending brush in that shade Sweet Lilac. We're gonna just load our brush up, tap off the excess, and we wanna go back into the crease and just diffuse those edges a little bit more. We just don't want a harsh line. I'm gonna do this on both sides. All right, you guys, we've done everything we're gonna do so far for the upper eyelids. I'm gonna cut away, finish off the face, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish off the lower lash line and highlight our inner corners and our brows. All right, you guys, we are back, and I must admit, things are looking rather cute today. I'm not the biggest fan of pastels, but I give props where props are due. It's like, honey, before you put your face and everything on, it be looking like, mmm. But, as with all tutorials, all sorts of products will be in the description bar below. But I wanted to tell you about a few of the things that I use today that I don't normally use. Things like my foundation, mascara, and stuff like that, I always use. So you can find that down below. But lately, 
Honey, I have been obsessed with the Sephora Best Skin Ever Concealer. The fact that I've used her once again today instead of picking up one of my old favorites is like, okay, Torrance, you are really feeling this. And I have the shade 29Y. I did a first impressions on this. If you want to check out that video, I'll leave it right here above. But I've been loving her and I'm like, honestly, Torrance, you got such a natural shade. I'm really thinking of going a little bit brighter. To me, this is considered like a natural bright under eye day. Like I kept telling myself, Torrance, we're wearing pastels. You don't want nothing to be over the top, nothing to compete with the eyes. But I ain't gonna lie, the lips is sort of doing that. So let's get on that next. The lips are a combo from the lip bar. Both items can be purchased, but I believe the lip gloss is only sold in a kit. It's not sold individually. First off, for the liner, straight no chaser. Purple lip liner, I um, lined my lips. I didn't overline them or anything. I just lined my lips. Then I took a synthetic buffing brush. It's like a rounded pencil brush from It Cosmetics or Ifa Ulta. I believe this brush is called their Precision Smudger Brush. I can't see the number, but this will be in the description bar. I used that to buff out that line. And then the product that was left on the brush, I used that to actually fill it in. I didn't take any more from the pencil because I did not want this to be a dark look. But with a purple of this dark, I mean, highlight wasn't going to get. So I'm sitting back like, okay, Torrance, if you want to lighten this up, you need something bright. The one gloss I do not have from the lip bar is their clear gloss. It's just, if I'm going to buy a gloss from a company, usually clear is the very last one I need. I don't. I have this one here. You see, I haven't used her up, so I was like, that's her Mac. I don't need a clear one. Give me some color. So I grabbed their lightest color from their kitty set, and this one is called Princess. I believe she's like a very pale yellow, maybe even yellow gold, but I put that on top because I knew it would be something that would slightly mute this purple, just enough so she don't just scream as dark as she was, because baby, I got a purple lipstick and a purple gloss from them that'll go on top of that. But we didn't want to do all of that. What else do we have going on? Oh, also from the lip bar. We set our face with their powders today. These are the Set the Tone Finishing Powders. For the highlighted areas, I have Swedish Chai. For the contoured areas and everywhere else around the face, I have the shade Golden Girl. I realized I only use these whenever I'm wearing the face bar uh, foundations. And I'm like, Torrance, you need to see what they look like on top of other things. These really are as natural as they seem on the other day, so I'm like, I would have to get an even lighter shade to brighten under my eye the way I wanted to, but they got the job done. For highlighter, this is the Ben Ready highlighter in the Stay Ready face palette. Figure since we are already using the lip bar, might as well keep her going. Normally, on a regular day, I would want something just a little bit darker than this, but I'm like, Torrance, we going for the pastels. Let's go ahead, let's keep it going. Who cares? What else do we got going on? Lower lash line. Instead of my psychedelic sister from Urban Decay, I'm wearing the color Raw Energy. This is the lightest purple I have from them. So I figured, you know what? Since we're wearing a pastel eye, we can go for a pastel liner. I'm not even sure if this is showing up purple on camera. If you get up close, I can see it's purple. But from regular speaking distance, most people really won't notice it. And for blush. I'm wearing a Juvie's Place blush. It's not that I'm upset with it. I really like it. The problem is I have volumes one and volumes two right here. They just released volumes three through six and I'm like, I want all four of those. Normally I would go in with volume two because she's the deeper of the two. No, my bad. I would normally go in with volume one because that's the deeper one. These shades are very dark skin friendly and they are beautiful, honey. But those are loud, and so today I went with volume two. I'm wearing the lighter one here, this bottom shade. I just wanted to be able to put blush on. I didn't want anything to compete with the face. Um, when I first put it on, you could really tell it was there. I'm not sure on camera if that pink blush, oh yeah, you can tell that it's a pink blush there. Just barely, but that's what I was going for. So I'm like, we good there. Is there anything else that I did off camera? I don't see or can think of any, oh. Something I forgot to do was set my brows, baby. I ain't got no brow gel on right now. So let me go ahead and do that and we'll be right back. Baby, I don't know how I forgot to do that. I'm just trying to finish up this ABH clear brow gel. So I have a disposable spoolie here. We're just going to take this and run this right through the brows really fast. 
Honey, ain't no point of getting them on if we can't lock them in place. Just sweep that through and make sure you don't have no stray hairs. I'm not seeing anything else that needs to be mentioned, so we're going to go ahead and get back to this eyeshadow because, baby, we not through. And I'm sitting back looking like we took the time and energy to buff two different shades on the top just to see that they really not giving me the depth and dimension I want. So instead of wasting and buffing our time off, honey, we're just going to take up this darker shade here, Sweet Lilac, and we're going to see what she built like on her own on the lower lash line. We're going to take our... Rougher 26 brush because this is a large pencil brush and we're going to smoke that out and see if she show up on her own because uh, baby layered on top of lilac you she wasn't showing a difference. So we're going to tap that off just because this is still the lower lash line. Start from the outer end and see what she's working with. Don't want to connect but. Sis, where you go? Okay, we're gonna try make actually we're not even gonna tap you off. We're gonna try this one more time. Purple lower lash line. And it seemed like you just got to drop the color there and just move. Like you can't buff it, you can't spread it, you just got to just press it on there and leave it if like i can see that now but it's like honey i don't get the freedom to go ahead and buff it out the way i want i really got to just slap that color there and keep it moving let me see make sure i'm not crazy here Okay, it's not wiping away this time, but some of that color did leave just then. But it's like, I mean, you would think with three layers, I would have a little bit more than that. I'll be right back, y'all. Okay, I just wanted to see if I was crazy. On this side, I just took one layer and just pressed and packed it on instead of trying to buff. And she seemed to go straight through that way. Trying to build her up and buff her out like an eyeshadow. Oh, no, ma'am. She was no good for that. Yeah, we just gonna quit stressing ourselves out. We're gonna leave that just like that, honey. All right, sis, now it's time to highlight our inner corners and our brows. And the thing is, I know for sure I wanna use this lightest purple, but it's like, do I wanna use that on the brows or do I wanna use that on the inner corners? Just because we wanna see what they both like, I'm gonna take this shade here, blooming on the top, that lightest purple. We're gonna use that on the brows. And just to give us a pop of color, we're gonna use this shade here, blossom on the inner eye corner. And just because Blossom is the lighter of the two, we're going to go on with that one first. And I think this is the first eyeshadow that we're using. All the other shades are going to be pigments. So I have my brush loaded and we want to just pack her on on the inner corner. Y'all know I like it beaming. I like it bright. I like it loud. And I'm glad we went with this shade because that pink is popping and it is complementing that purple there. Oh, baby, even on camera she look good. We're going to add a little more to the top just to connect those colors and blend those together right there. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, I am loving that. I gotta do this on the other side. Now we wanna pick up the shade Blooming here. I wanna turn so you all can see this arch, cause baby, this is gonna go at the very highest point. And I wanna put just a little, ooh, because I know we're going for such a light purple look, I'm going to put some down first and then we can buff it out afterwards. Baby. She is sparkling and pretty. I know she would have made a cute layer shade. And I don't want to take it all the way to the front, but we can take it all the way to the back. Oh, yes. I know y'all can see that on camera, honey. Mm-hmm. I don't think y'all getting the full intensity of that pink flip, though, because, baby, she is giving. All right, you guys, I'm putting my brushes down. This is all we're going to do today. I promise you all it will be a simple eye look, but wouldn't be no point of doing everything if we're not going to lock it in. So grab your setting sprays because you know I'm about to grab mine. Fix Plus to give us a glowy do.
all nighter so things will last all day. Cheap fan, expensive breeze, good times. I'm gonna give this a few more moments to dry and I'll be back to give you all my final thoughts. And this is the final look. I wanna go ahead, give you all a full face view of things before I give you all my final thoughts. And I'm here to tell you all, the look is actually prettier than I thought it was gonna be. I'm back and forth on how I feel about this palette, but I'm sitting here looking straight in the mirror like, okay, Torrance, take anything out of consideration. Just looking at this look, if you were walking up the street and you saw somebody wearing this, the first thing I would go is, that is so soft and pretty. The problem is, knowing how much energy and effort it took for me to put in to get such a soft and easy look is like, yeah, honey, um, soft looks, easy looks should come with easy amount of efforts and things like that. And I feel as if maybe it's just me, but I had to work for this look today. Let's get into it. You get what? 16 shades here in this palette, and I am counting four, five, six, seven mattes. So we have seven mattes, nine metallics. I'm here to let you all know, just based off performance today, I can't tell you about the actual eyeshadow matte formula because the mattes that we used were these two and they are both considered pigments. But baby, I was wondering where's the pigment? Juvia's Place is known for being over the top like pigment for dark skin women of color. This palette here, I mean, if a dark skin woman is wearing a white eyeshadow base, if she used her her found her concealer that she used up here, mm, I'm not sure about that. Cause baby, light like you took some building up, but as a transition shade, I didn't mind that. Sweet Lilac? No, ma'am. I think the only way you gonna ever use that shade is if you just put her straight on and leave her be. Trying to buff her, trying to blend her out, she just diffuses, she disappears. Y'all saw I did three layers of transition and three in the crease and I don't see where my crease work was coming through and showing out for my hooded lids. On the lower lash line, when I tried to go in and buff her out with that pencil brush, she didn't give me nothing. When I just got tired and said, you know what? Pack, 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 press, press, press. She went straight through. But then I'm like, nah, I can't diffuse you. I'm scared to build and put other colors on top of you. So it's like, Torrance, do you like this palette? Yes. Am I happy I have it? I'm a Juvia's Place collector and I do YouTube. So yes. If my little sister called me and told me, oh, I'm headed to Ulta to pick up the Garden of Juvia's palette. Hold on. Sis. Come here, give me your $20. I want you to put that to the side and wait for this to go on sale. And I mean like half off sale. It's not a bad palette. It's just, it didn't wow me. And I, I love Juvia's Place and I love them because I have hooded eyes. I understand that I'm not a fan of pastels but I still don't feel as if this look should have been this hard to work for. And it's like, honey, if I already wasn't feeling pastels, do I really feel like putting in extra energy and effort to achieve a pastel look? Not with this palette, I don't. I see me using this as just transition mattes and then pulling another Juvia's Place in to deepen things up or just not using these mattes at all. These shimmers, although beautiful, I must admit as well, this particular shade here, Flower Child, the one all over the lid, does have a lot of kick up. I mean, a lot of fallout. It's fallout in the pan, it was fallout on the eyes. Does it wipe away easily? Yes. But is it there? Yes. So if you're the type of person who does your face first, you might not want to put this all over the lid first. I would recommend doing your eyes first. And it just feels weird because this palette is so pretty. Like the artwork on the outside is beautiful. The look I have here is beautiful, but it's like, Mm-mm, no man. I can't tell y'all to go out here and spend y'all money and get this, not at full price. I still say Juvia's Place is known for their 50% off sales. Wait for that, honey, but I don't know anybody 
I've, I haven't heard anybody say this is their favorite palette. Oh, this is my new favorite. This is my favorite from Juvia's Place. N neither one. It's pretty. It's in store. It's there, but I see this being one of those palettes that comes and goes. Like, once it sells out, I don't see Juvia's Place restocking this palette, honey. It, it's not, like I said, she's not memorable. And that's sad to say for Juvia's Place because I love all of the palettes that I have from them. But once again, catch your own clearance. Do not spend y'all full price, hard on money on that. No, ma'am. You want something bomb from Juvia's Place? Those blushes and those blush duos? Absolutely fabulous. I will go grab those, but... It just feels bad when you have to talk down on a brand that you absolutely love, but you all know. I have every palette they've ever released, so I am a supporter of the brand, but I can't lie to them. I mean, lie to y'all for them, honey. She cute, she just not worth the money, so hold your coins, wait for their next release, grab an old release or something like that, but we got to go ahead and end this video here because, honey, although I'm going to step out and start and show everybody how pretty this is, I'm not going to tell nobody what it is. They're going to be like, oh, what did you do? You're going to have to check my video out. I can't remember what the palette is because I don't want nobody to hurry up and grab it and run out and pick it up. And I also don't want to spoil my review of this eyeshadow palette. So we're going to end this here. And I hope you all truly did enjoy this video. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. If you want to see any other tutorials from Juvia's Place, once again, I have every palette they've released. So if I don't have a tutorial up on my channel that you want to see from them, just leave that in the comment section down below so I can get that going for you all. Also, to any family and friends that's watching, if y'all want to pick up those blush duos for my birthday that's coming up, I got one and two. You can go ahead and pick up three through six for me, baby. Um, this lip combo. Y'all see how she the neutral down? I might have to go in and top this off with some more gloss, but I'm like, baby. I'm like, yeah, how that purple that went down and went a little muted, honey. She's not competing with the eyes like she was. But I'm focusing on this lip look a little too much when it's supposed to be about the eyes, honey. And to me, that's another thing that lets you know I'm really not into pastels. But got brushes to clean, got a video to edit. So once again, I hope you all truly did enjoy this video. But I'm talking, I'm rambling, let's gotta get this over with. So with nothing else, I hope you all remember to practice, continue to stay blessed, and until next time, goodbye YouTube.